Welcome back to a new video. Today I am going to be reviewing the paper shoot camera. So if you watch the vlogs, you'll have seen me get this. Uh, I was very, very excited about it. Uh, I found paper shoot cameras on Instagram and immediately I was like, I need it. <laughs> so yeah, today I'm going to be talking about this super cool paper shoot camera. I'm going to be telling you exactly what I think about it. I'm going to show you some photos I've taken on it already. And yeah, I'm just going to tell you everything about it. Uh, but first we're going to start off talking about the company itself. Before we get into the actual review, uh, I'm sure a lot of you probably have no idea what a paper shoot camera is, so I will tell you a little bit about them. Um, as I said, I found them on Instagram, um, it was just by chance, they're super cool, and as you can see, they are kind of like a disposable camera. I have a couple of disposable cameras, and yeah, you can see they're very similar, similar in size, um, the paper shoot is much thinner, um, and yeah, so they're, they're very similar to disposable cameras, and they are designed to be like disposable cameras. But higher quality basically however they are slightly different because for one the paper shoot camera is digital whereas the disposable cameras you can get these pretty much anywhere um these are obviously on film and then you have to go and get it developed and you get the prints back uh, i believe you can also get digital versions on like a cd or something yeah cd <laughs> um but yeah these are mostly prints whereas this is digital however they do work pretty much the same in essence you just have a little button on the front here you click it it takes a photo obviously there's no screen on either of them so you can't see the photo until after you've taken it um so yeah they are very similar in the way they work however they do have a lot of differences the main one of course being that this is digital so it came with just a little uh cable you just plug it into your computer and you can take the photos off um i believe it's a 32 gigabyte memory card um or at least it takes up to 32 gigabytes it might be a 16 gigabyte that's in this um, and so you, you can have approximately 600 photos on this and then of course because you just plug it into your computer when you filled up the memory card you just delete them and start again <laughs> so yeah in essence paper shoot cameras are really just disposable cameras but sort of the next step i want to tell you a little bit more about the company because i do think they're really cool and i uh like that they're, they're just a really sustainable company and i really believe in what they stand for the original idea for the paper shoot camera was created by george lynn um, and his idea behind it was to create basically a sustainable disposable camera. Uh, something that obviously it has no screen, you know, you can't see the pictures, you just kind of click it and then move on with your life. Um, and, you know, at first that wasn't really what drew me towards it. Um, you know, I'm not really one that really has an issue with sort of putting their phone away. I know a lot of people do, but it's not really something that I struggle with. So that's not what personally drew me towards this. Uh, but that is kind of the main idea. You're meant to have... You know like a disposable camera which is you know you just take the photo and then like carry on with your day it's meant to be that but more sustainable because obviously it's not using film it's digital so you can just you know take the photos off and start again you don't have to get rid of it every like every week and buy a new one uh so that is kind of the original idea i will put their uh sort of goals and aims for the company up on the screen but in short, their goals are to create a more sustainable option to disposable cameras, uh, allow us to step away from our phones, encourage creativity through simplicity, which I personally really like this one, I will be talking more about that, um, pay workers fair living wages, which, I mean, personally, I don't even really think that should be on there because should that not even be a given, but, you know, it, we, we, we live in a world where it is a thing, unfortunately, um, and in inclusivity, which I will also be talking a little bit more about. So we're very nearly done with the introduction, but I wanted to mention exactly what camera I got because there are some options. I got the Cross Vanguard set, which is a little bit different. It comes in a like clear plastic case, um, and so it, and it, it was a tiny bit more expensive. The standard paper cameras are one hundred and twenty dollars. Uh, translated into whatever currency you're buying in uh, whereas this one was $160 uh, so it was a little bit more expensive but I really wanted the clear case because I wanted to be able to see the inner workings because that's kind of it was part of the fun to me I thought it was really cool but you got to like see exactly like exactly what the camera is made of so that's why I wanted the clear case and also this one came with two of the lenses which I will be talking about a bit later uh, whereas I believe if you just buy the paper set you just you have to buy the lenses separately there are other different variations as well. You can get like a cork set, a wood set, a vintage one. I'm not really sure exactly what the difference is at those high ends, but again, they vary slightly in prices. The most expensive ones are the premium and the vintage at $250, which I personally think is a little bit too much, especially because as far as I can tell, all you get is the upgraded aesthetic, uh, which doesn't seem particularly worth it to me. Uh, but yeah, the cheapest one is $120, which in pounds is about 86 pounds, I think it was. 
Uh, so yeah, obviously I don't know about any other currencies, but you can just Google that. <laughs> so yeah, there are different options. Some of them are cheaper than others. Uh, but yeah, I got the Vanguard one because I wanted to be able to see what was inside. Okay, now on to the real review. So normally how I do these reviews is I have a sort of pros and cons list. I'll run you through that very quickly and then we will talk more in depth. So on the pro side, we have it is sustainable, much more sustainable than a disposable camera, which is of course what it's meant to be an alternative to. Uh, it helps you disconnect from your phone. Uh, this is obviously one of their aims. And I actually found that it really does help you disconnect from your phone more than I originally thought it would, uh, since that wasn't really one of the reasons I bought it, but it really does help you disconnect from your phone. Not being able to see the photos you take and just, you know, not having a screen, it really does give you some sort of sense of creative freedom. I am obviously a photographer uh, and I'm used to sort of, you know, micromanaging every single aspect of a photo. Um, and it really does, sometimes it does wear on you a little bit because it's like, oh, well that, you know, tiny little bird in the corner is a little bit blurry. So I've got to take that again. Uh, but it really does allow you to just snap and move on. And I do consider them to be fairly accessible. The only thing that isn't as accessible is the price. However, for a little camera, it is very accessible to an awful lot of people. And of course, the final pro is it's just really cool. <laughs> um, like, you know, we all have eyes. How cool is it? The only major con I've been able to find is the price. However, I will be talking more about the price in detail because there is sort of it is kind of worth the price, it's just that it's a lot of money to pay up front. So we will be talking more about the price later, but yeah, the price is really the, just the main con. You know, it's like £86 or $120, whatever. It's a lot of money to pay up front. However, I do personally think it's worth it when you look at the numbers. The only other difference, I guess, is that of course this is digital, whereas the disposable cameras are film. Uh, so if you specifically want the film aspect and you want to have like the negatives and the actual prints then of course this is not the same because it doesn't have film you you don't get prints from it I mean I guess you can use your own printer but you know so if you specifically want the film negatives and stuff then the paper shoe camera doesn't do that um, but if you're just looking for photos with that sort of style and the sort of aesthetic of the uh, disposable camera then it does that basically <laughs> So now let's go into a little bit more detail. The first thing I mentioned was of course that they are very sustainable. Um, so obviously compared to a disposable camera, which is of course what they are based off of, um, you know, you don't ever have to throw it away because you can just wipe the memory card and start again. Whereas of course these, I believe this one has 27 photos on, that seems to be the average when I did my research. Uh, so, you know, 27 photos is not a lot and then you have to get it developed and it just gets thrown in the bin. On the very base level, it is obviously way more sustainable because you're not constantly throwing <laughs> disposable cameras in the bin. They certainly seem to stand by their claim to sustainability. The packaging it came in is not only really cool, but was also very sustainable. It came in this box, which is pretty cool. Uh, if you open it, it came in. Obviously, I've obviously put the camera together since then, but you know, the camera was in pieces and you had to put it together, which is another really cool element that we'll be getting to. Um, and yeah, it's completely cardboard, completely recyclable. Uh, it came with uh, like, it's like an alternative to bubble wrap, but I don't know what it's called, but it's made of paper basically, so it's recyclable. Although I actually didn't recycle it, I kept it because I'm gonna use it as a photography prop. Uh, but you know. So yeah, they certainly do seem to stand by their sustainability claim. Um, and yeah, this packaging is also just really cool. And I felt I would, it would be unjust to not show it, you know? Cause it is pretty cool. So yeah, as far as sustainability goes, they do seem to be a very sustainable company. They certainly do seem to stand by it. Um, obviously, I don't know all of the behind the scenes stuff. I only know what I could find from my research on their websites and stuff. Uh, but yeah, they do seem to be a very sustainable company. On a very base level, uh, if you, this holds, I believe it's 600 photos and the average disposable camera holds about 27 photos. So if you just do the simple maths, uh, it would be 22 disposable cameras to equal the same amount of photos in here. So 22 of these thrown in the bin to reach this amount of photos. So yeah, on that base level, they are incredibly sustainable. Um, and of course you're also not, uh, you know, developing the film and throwing that away and stuff like that. So it, they are very sustainable compared to a disposable camera. Now, ironically, I think I believe I got the least sustainable version because this is plastic. Uh, whereas the other ones, I believe they are actually made of paper. I don't know if it's sort of just paper put inside a plastic case or something because um, paper seems somewhat flimsy to me, but I expect it's quite thick paper, more like cardboard. Um, and the other ones are made of like cork and wood, which are obviously more sustainable than, than 
plastic. Um, I got this one purely for the aesthetic, so ironically this is probably the least sustainable of the bunch. Uh, but yeah, if you aren't particularly bothered about seeing the inner workings, then uh, you can go and get any of the other ones. I'm sure they're more sustainable. Um, so yeah, they do seem, at least on the outside, to get their resources from credible places, but of course I'm not part of the company, so I can't really put any stock in that, but they do certainly seem like a sustainable company. But regardless, it can't be denied that this is far more sustainable than disposing of 22 disposable cameras. <laughs> so they certainly do seem to be sustainable. However, moving on to the next point, uh, one of their main goals is to help people disconnect from their phones. As I mentioned earlier, this is personally not really a problem for me. Um, I don't really use my phone that much anyway. Perhaps it has something to do with my autism, but I don't use it that much and it, I've never found disconnecting from it to be a problem. If anything, as a YouTuber, um, I actually have the opposite problem. I forget to pick up my phone and vlog <laughs> far too often and then I come to the end of the week and I have no footage. Um, so if anything, I have the opposite problem. <laughs> However, I am aware that it is a problem that a lot of people have and even though it's not something that I personally struggle with, I have actually noticed something of a difference. Uh, because of course when I go for a walk or something, you know, I will often see stuff I want to take a photo of, like an Instagram story or something. Um, and then, you know, like when you open your phone, you can't help but notice if you've got notifications, which to be fair, I don't really get that many notifications because I don't really have that many friends. Um, but, you know, that aside, it does kind of spoil the magic slightly by being on your phone, even if it is just to take a photo. Um, whereas this has kind of fixed that. Um, I can now leave my phone firmly in my bag um, and I can just carry this around. Honestly, the biggest difference it has had in terms of my phone is that when I'm out and about, I'll listen to music. But when you open the camera app, it pauses the music, which is super annoying. <laughs> um, and so it means I can take photos whilst not interrupting my music. So yeah, the difference I've noticed is probably comparatively very small compared to a lot of other people. But um, I'm sure if you do really struggle with disconnecting from your phone, having a disposable camera or something like paper shoot camera is really cool. My sister and I always took disposable cameras on holiday and stuff with us when we were younger. We'd buy one disposable camera and we'd have that for the whole holiday. Um, and then we'd come back and we'd get it developed and it would be like, you know, a little uh, like package of photos from that specific holiday. Um, and so it, it essentially does that, but you can use it day to day and stuff because it's not like, you know, you don't really have limited photos because you can just clear the memory card and start again. So it's essentially, it still captures all of that magic of a disposable camera, but it's unlimited. And it does really help you disconnect from your phone, or at least it allows you to properly leave it in your bag instead of kind of having to have it in your pocket or let's be honest, hold it because girls' clothes don't have pockets. Um, you know, so you can just have it in your bag and forget about it and you can hold this instead. Now, as a photographer and an artist, the thing I most definitely love most about paper shoot camera is the creativity it offers. Um, I'm always looking for different ways to experiment with my photos, my different photo shoots. I'm currently doing a 365 challenge, so I'm taking photos every single day, which has been challenging to say the least. So I'm always looking at ways to experiment and try new things because sometimes, you know, you can just get stuck in a loop of, oh, I'll just take another portrait, but with slightly different makeup or something. Um, and this has really offered that. It also comes with lenses. Uh, so I believe if you just buy the paper camera, I believe you have to buy the lenses separately. However, this was a set, so it came with two lenses. So these two lenses came with the camera. It's a macro and a wide angle lens, so fairly standard. Uh, but I was really excited about these because of course, I'm a photographer, so I have a real big camera. Um, and I've always wanted to kind of try a wide angle lens and a macro lens, but like, I'm not gonna spend thousands of pounds on a lens just to play with it for half an hour. So it was really cool having these because I actually got to play with them. Um, and I experimented with them on lots of different ways. So I will be showing you all of that momentarily. Um, it also came, I don't actually remember ordering this one, but it's her, uh, this one is the prism lens. You can get the prism and I think it's a radial effect lens. Um, I believe this one was sent as like a sorry it's late sort of thing. Uh, but I kind of, you know, I knew shipping was slow and it was coming from like halfway around the world. So I wasn't expecting it to come very quickly. Uh, but yeah, thanks for this lens anyway, because <laughs> uh, it was fun to play with. So yeah, this camera really has offered a lot of creative opportunities. I think 
specifically for me as a photographer um it's i've been experimenting a lot with film photography and stuff recently and the thing that's very different about it to just normal photography is that of course that you can't see your photos once you've taken them you just kind of have to snap it and walk away which is still a very weird feeling to me because i'm so used to checking it and making sure i've got the right shot but it's just kind of take the photo you know <laughs> and that's it um and it is still sometimes a little bit weird for me as a photographer but it's nice to sort of have that freedom i guess i've been experimenting a whole load with these so i will put the photos up on screen now to show you what i've been doing uh, but yeah, I took a whole load of photos with these, I took it outside um, in lots of different light situations so that I could see how it held up. Um, I tried out all the different filters because there is a filter button on the back. Uh, so it's normal, uh, black and white, red, blue, I believe, or it might be blue, red, but I think it's red, blue. Um, and so, you know, I tried out all the different filters. Um, so I will put all of those up on screen. Um, I also tried, you know, I tried things with the lenses on the camera. I also tried holding the little lenses up in front of my real camera and taking a photo through the lens, which came out really cool. Um, I personally found that that worked better than having the lenses on this. Um, pure, I mean, purely from a professional photographer stance, the photos obviously came out much better quality on my real camera. Uh, because the only thing with this that I found mildly frustrating is that obviously because you can't see the photo you also can't focus it um, and so and it's, it's not a huge problem with the prism lens or the wide angle lens the only thing that's difficult is the macro lens uh, because you kind of have to it's really difficult to know how close you need to get um, and it often most of them are blurry uh, so it's very difficult to get the macro lens to work on this and have it come out high quality but also at the same time this isn't designed to create high quality photos so purely from a photographer's standpoint the macro lens isn't the best on this but it's not designed for professional photographers so it's not really a shortcoming it's just something that i personally find somewhat annoying <laughs> yeah i did have a lot of fun playing with the lenses playing with all the filters um i tried it i made sure to try it on loads of different colors to see how they came out using the different filters i then brought them into photoshop and i edited the colors um and yeah it does work really good <laughs> it took a lot of getting used to um you know it kind of it's difficult to know how close you need to hold it to yourself when you take a selfie and stuff uh it does actually have quite a wide range so if you take it from sort of this angle it will show a whole lot in fact let me take a selfie And I'll put that up on screen to show you sort of what range it has. So yeah, it did take a bit of getting used to, um, but honestly that's mostly just because I haven't used disposable cameras in so long. Uh, like I said, I do have these, but honestly I bought these like three years ago. Uh, I think it was for a GCSE product project and I just never ended up using them. So yeah, it does take some getting used to, but it is really cool and it has given me so many more creative options. Um, I'll definitely take this most places I go, you know, it's obviously not going to replace my proper camera or anything uh, but it is super cool I like to take it on walks and stuff because it means I can just put my phone in my bag and I don't have to worry about interrupting the music and stuff um, and yeah I think it would be especially cool to take on like you know if you're going on a day out or something you can just safely store your phone away and you don't have to worry about it and you can use this instead it'd be great to take on holidays and things like a lot of people do with disposable cameras um, and it just sort of allows you like a similar freedom with that you get from a disposable camera but with more options because of course it has the four filters on the back so you can get a little bit more creative you can have the lenses so again you can have a bit more creative a bit more options um you can take some cooler photos using like the prisms or the radial lens or something um and it also is obviously just more sustainable you don't have to worry about being limited to 27 photos you know you've got 600 and then you can just copy them off to your laptop or something and start again so yeah it really does allow you quite a lot of creative freedom and even if you aren't a photographer or an artist in any way it is essentially just sort of an upgraded disposable camera uh, i know they're kind of cool and in at the moment um i don't really know any of the trends i might be 18 but trust me i'm not in on it <laughs> uh so yeah i know they're quite cool at the moment so it is essentially just an upgraded disposable camera that allows you to do a lot more with it
The lenses are also super easy to use. Um, it is, as you can see, it just comes on this little keychain thing. I literally have these attached to my keys most of the time. I obviously took them off for the sake of this video. Uh, but yeah, it's super easy. You just slide this little magnetic cap off. You obviously have to take the cover off and then you just snap it on the camera and it just works. So you see, camera, lens, done. <laughs> and it'll just take a photo. And they are, they are pretty secure, see? Which actually brings me on to my next point, which is accessibility. Now, if you didn't know, if you're new to this channel, I have Tourette's, there it is. Um, which means that basically I just sometimes can't control my new movements. Um, and yeah, a lot of my tics are, there you go, just demonstrating. Uh, it gets worse when I talk about it, which is why it's more prevalent. Um, so yeah, a lot of my tics are in my hands and also my neck. Um, and so of course, when it's in your hands, I have a tendency to throw things, drop things, and which is unintended. <laughs> uh, but yeah, as you can see, I can shake this as much as I like, tick as much as I like, and that lens is not going anywhere, <laughs> which is really good. Now, obviously, if you knock the lens, it comes off pretty easily, but that is kind of to be expected. Uh, but, you know, on a base level, like, you can really shake it as much as you like, um, and it's not going to come off. And the magnet is pretty strong, so, you know, like, a gust of wind is not going to knock it off. They're also very durable. Uh, I've dropped this on the floor several times. Uh, that's just a symptom of something being owned by me. Things get dropped on the floor a lot. Cannot tell you how many times I've thrown my phone on the floor, uh, which is why I have a heavy-duty case on it. Uh, but yeah, so these are pretty durable. Um, not a scratch on it. <laughs> I obviously do not know how the other ones stack up because I don't have them. I imagine the paper one would be somewhat more delicate, but again, I don't know exactly. I don't know how they're made. Uh, so yeah, um, if you're like me and you tend to throw things on the floor a lot, I would personally recommend this one just because I haven't tried the other ones out and I know that this one is durable uh, and will can withstand being dropped on the floor a couple of times. <laughs> obviously, I wouldn't encourage you to drop it on the floor, but you know, it, it, it can be dropped on the floor and it'll live to tell the tale. So yeah, they are pretty durable and therefore quite accessible from that point of view. Uh, the lenses I imagine would be somewhat more delicate because of course they have glass in them. Uh, but again, like the glass is fairly well protected and as long as you don't, you know, throw it on concrete and jump up and down on it, it'll probably be fine. You know, keep, keep the lens uh, in its case and stuff and it should stay fine and protective even if you do drop it on the floor. Just perhaps try and avoid dropping things in puddles. <laughs> so yeah, from a physical point of view, this camera is fairly accessible. It was interesting to me that they actually put accessibility as a key goal on their website because you rarely see that. Um, and as a disabled person, uh, it was very refreshing to see that. And I was very interested to see whether it was actually accessible or if it was just, oh yeah, we're totally accessible and they barely even know what the definition of the word is, but they do seem to be actually accessible. <laughs> because as I've said, they seem to be very durable. Again, I can't speak for the other ones because I don't own them. Uh, but yeah, I've dropped this on the floor, so it's Tourette's friendly. Uh, as long as you don't, you know, drop it in the bath or something. I don't know why you'd be using it in the bath, but you know. But yeah, it should be fine to be knocked around a little bit. You know, it's not super fragile or anything. Um, so yeah, and it, it does seem to be fairly accessible in terms of use. It is obviously, of course, really easy to use. You know, I would argue that this is actually easier to use than a disposable camera from a uh, sort of physical standpoint, because this, you press the button, and if you want to change the filter, you push the slider. That's it. Those are the only two buttons. Uh, whereas this one, with disposable cameras, you obviously have to wind the film on, uh, which, of course, some people may not be able to do for one reason or another. Uh, these disposable cameras also have flashes on them, um, and as someone who is personally very sensitive to light, uh, that's not great. Um, honestly, I don't really know how to turn the flash off on this one. Uh, it's been far too long. Uh, but yeah, this one has slightly more flashy lights, whereas this one, it does glow blue. I will show you. But it's just those little things. They don't uh, flash, they just light up for a second and then turn off. And of course, you probably just heard the little noise which I personally love that noise uh, it makes my autistic sensory brain very happy um, I think that's a really cool noise it's the same reason why 
Um, I always have the shutter noise on on my real camera. A lot of photographers turn it off so they can take photos sort of surreptitiously. Uh, and although I very much appreciate that, I just love the noise too much. Uh, so yeah, I don't turn it off. <laughs> so yeah, I would say this camera is actually better in terms of physical accessibility because it's easier to use. You don't have to put much pressure on the button. It doesn't take a lot of strength. Uh, I mean, I can push it and honestly, I'm really not that strong. Um, and yeah, the slider is, it's sort of, it sticks out suitably far enough that it is fairly easy to move. So yeah, it is pretty easy to use. Something worth mentioning is that I did have to put it together, which was personally part of the allure for me. I was like, yeah, I want to build my own camera, like that's so cool. Uh, however, of course, if you are, you know, physically impaired in any way, you may need help with that. It was a little bit fiddly, not hugely fiddly. It was actually, it was very easy to put together, very self-explanatory. It comes with the case separate and then the inside bit separate. So you just put the inside bit in and you screw it in and that's it. And obviously you've got to put batteries in it. Um, but yeah, that's it. <laughs> put the batteries in, put the inside bit in and put the screws in and that's it. So yeah, it is very easy, but of course, if you uh, struggle with like fine little things, I, I dropped the screws several times. I'm not great at the fine motor skills then. You may need help putting it together, but honestly, it's like a 60 second job. So yeah. The lenses are of course fairly small and therefore may be difficult to sort of get your fingers around and try and get them off. I found the caps were quite difficult to get off. Uh, the first few times I used them, now I've used them a lot, it's quite easy. Uh, however, that could be very easily adapted. I'm sure you could get like a lanyard or something so that they would never fall off. Uh, the magnets are really strong, uh, so like they're really not going anywhere. <laughs> so yeah, you do really quite have to pull. Uh, so yeah, the magnets are quite strong. I mean, obviously if you yank at it, they're gonna come off. Um, but yeah, so I'm sure you could find a way around that to make this a little bit more accessible. Obviously that's a very personal thing and you'd have to figure it out yourself. So although they are quite small, uh, they would, I can see a lot of different ways that you could make them easy to use. The only thing that isn't particularly accessible about this camera is the price. Obviously a lot of disabled people are on benefits and stuff. I personally am as well. And so money is always an issue. A lot of us cannot work like myself. Um, and so yeah, money is always an issue. As I mentioned, I spent $160 or I think it was like 120 quid on this camera, which is fairly expensive up front. However, I did the maths and it is cheaper in the long run. So let me tell you the numbers. So this camera has 600 photos on it. Um, and if you take the sort of average price, I did 120 because it's like 100, this one was about 120 pounds and the paper camera is about $120. It really depends exactly where you are in the world. Um, but basically the math comes to, it's about two pence per photo. Whereas these cameras have 27 photos on them. The, the cost varies depending on exactly where you get it from. You can get them anywhere from like eight to even 40 pounds. I did some research and the average price for these cameras seems to be about 15 pounds. Um, but then you also have to take into account the development costs for those cameras, which are about £10. Again, it completely depends where you get them developed. Um, so yeah, all in all, it's about £25 per camera from start to finish, which of course means that each photo costs just under a pound, which is obviously significantly more to the 2p per photo. So yeah, if you just look at the price like that, it is very clear that the paper shoot camera is worth a lot more. You get 600 photos compared to 27, and those 600 photos are two pence per photo as opposed to nearly a pound per photo. And with the paper shoot camera, you also get four different filters, the lenses if you wanna buy them separately. And of course you get, you know, 600 photos is just the first run. You can then just delete them all and start again. So it's essentially infinite photos, but I did it just based on one run so yeah and this this disposable camera is actually a black and white one i have a black and white one and a color one whereas the paper shoot camera has just a normal filter a black and white filter and two other filters so this is essentially like four different disposable cameras in one that does significantly more photos for significantly cheaper so it is if you do the maths it is significantly cheaper to buy the paper shoot camera however the maths only holds up if you're going to use it in the long run because of course if you're just going to use it once then there's no point in getting the paper shoot because of course you're only going to use it once you only need like 30 photos so just get a disposable camera and that is obviously cheaper 25 pounds versus 
hundred and something. So yeah, the price does of course depend on exactly what you're going to be using it for, how often you're going to use it and stuff. But if you do use disposable cameras, even if it's not like on a daily basis, if you use them every time you go on a holiday and stuff, then it is worth getting a paper shoot because not only do you then have way more photos, you know, you can have like 600 per holiday rather than 27. Uh, you also get all the four filters, you can have the lenses and stuff. Uh, so it is just infinitely better if you use them on a semi-regular basis. If it's just going to be a one-off, then just buy a disposable camera. But yeah, if you use them even semi-regularly, I would say get the paper shoot one. Now, obviously having to pay that much money up front is not hugely accessible because as I said, a lot of disabled people, we struggle with money because we can't work. We're often tied to the government who has all sorts of ridiculous rules about you can't have this much money in your account or take away your benefits. Uh, so yeah, I am very well aware of that. If money is an issue, it would be the sort of thing you would have to save up for. And whether or not you think that's worth it, it completely depends on your personal situation, uh, whether or not you're going to use it enough and stuff like that. But yeah, money is a very personal thing and obviously I can't tell you what to do with it. <laughs> so the final note before I get into whether or not I would recommend it and give it a rating is I just wanted to mention how cool it is, really, <laughs> uh, because it's super cool. You know, I saw this camera, I saw this one specifically, and because you can see all the inner workings of it, I was like, I need it because it's so cool. You know, I love that you can see everything going on inside. Obviously, I am a photographer, so that particularly interests me. Uh, but yeah, it's just, it's so simple, but so cool. And the fact that I actually got to build it and screw it together myself <laughs> is also really cool. I really like building things. I really like Lego. So yeah, building it was also super cool. If you're not as much as a Lego photography fan as I am, uh, it might not be quite as cool, but like, it's really cool, you know? <laughs> and I felt it was worth mentioning just how cool it is, basically. <laughs> so those are all my thoughts, but now let's get into whether or not I would recommend it. So overall, I would say I would give the paper shoot camera about four out of five stars. Um, it is really freaking good. If you just straight up compare it to a disposable camera, I would give it five out of five stars because as a disposable camera, it is just infinitely better. You get basically four of these cameras in one, you get the lenses and everything. So it's kind of like eight cameras in one. Um, it's you know, it's so much more sustainable, you're not throwing away cameras, you can just use it infinitely. You know, I mean, if you look after it, it'll last your whole life. You know, you might, you have to replace the batteries every now and then, but you know, it's just like, if you just compare it to a disposable camera, it is just infinitely better. So yeah, if you are a fan of disposable cameras, if you use them often, you know, you just like every time you go on holiday, every time you go for a day out or something, I would absolutely recommend the paper shoot camera uh, because compared to a disposable camera, it is just, infinitely better in every way <laughs> it's so much more sustainable it will save you money in the long run um and yeah it's just it's so much better compared to a disposable camera so if you regularly use disposable cameras um and you are just looking for basically a better long-lasting sustainable camera um just get a paper shoot camera <laughs> you know it will save you a lot of money in the long run uh it's better for the environment they're a really cool company they look really cool <laughs> i mean like this looks way cooler than this you know uh you can also get loads of different cases i particularly wanted the clear one so i could see the inner workings but if you're not bothered about the inner workings uh you can get wood ones you can get cork ones you can get just the paper cameras which come with all different sorts of different designs um you can get ones that look like you know like vintage cameras and things so yeah there's all sorts of different aesthetic options and like yeah so if you just want a more sustainable disposable camera that's going to last you a long time just get a paper shoot camera <laughs> it's, it's a no-brainer you know the math really stands up um and yeah it'll save you so much time and money and you'll help save the planet a little bit now if you are not a regular disposable camera user then i would advise you know really thinking about it because it is a fair amount of money up front um so if you do not use disposable cameras regularly and it's just sort of a one-off thing you tried once it probably isn't worth it to get a paper shoot camera uh, however, if it's something you're sort of, you know, because I know, I know disposable cameras are sort of like in at the moment, they're cool, everyone wants one. Uh, so if it is something you're interested in, I would suggest buying a few disposable cameras, using them, trying them out, experimenting over a few months. And if you turn out to really love them and it's something you use regularly, then invest in a paper shoot. <laughs> You know, it's sort of like if you first get into photography, you just sort of, you use your phone, you see what you can do on that. And then when you realize you really love it, then you buy a camera, you know, you don't just go straight in. 
for the £3,000 camera, you know? Or, you know, if you're doing marker drawings, you know, maybe just try some Tesco markers before you go straight in at the deep end for the Copic markers. It's kind of like that, basically. You know, give it a try, and if you turn out to really love the disposable cameras and it's something you use a lot, then get yourself a paper shoot. It'll save you loads of money in the long run, and they're just generally really cool. Uh, but yeah, if, you're, if it's not something you're going to use often, then it'll probably just sit in a drawer collecting dust. <laughs> Now, from a photographer's point of view, I think it has been really fun for me experimenting with this. It's definitely not a need for a photographer, not even remotely. Um, I do use disposable cameras quite a lot. I really love the aesthetic of them. Um, and it's just fun being able to take them around. As I said, me and my sister always take them on holiday and things. Um, so we just have like a little camera roll of stuff from that particular holiday. So yeah, disposable cameras are something that I personally use a lot, which is why I bought this. From a photographer's point of view, I have of course experimented a lot with this, a lot more than sort of the standard person would use it for. Um, as I said, I tried using the lenses in front of my real camera, um, and that actually re wielded some pretty cool effects. I am thinking of buying a wide angle lens. Uh, so yeah, paper shoot, if you're watching, it's all your fault that I'm gonna go and buy a wide angle lens. Uh, so you know thanks for that uh it was fun being able to play with the macro lens uh like i said without paying thousands of pounds for a macro lens just to experiment with it for half an hour uh so yeah that was really cool and it it was really fun playing with all the different things it was fun experimenting with the filters filters aren't something that any professional photographer uses but it was fun experimenting with them and i would also say the black and white on this camera is excellent it's not over contrasty or anything which i find a lot of like black and white filters are and so it's just like you know black white and that's it there's no gray uh so it's quite it's quite low contrast so it's just like it's a it's like a chill black and white i'll put a photo up on screen so you know what i mean um but yeah it's a the black and white filter i particularly love and then it leaves a lot of space for you to edit that in photoshop afterwards and the sort of regular filter is also very reminiscent of a disposable camera so they really got that right uh, so yeah, from a photographer's point of view, it was very diff very fun to play with, um, very different, very fun, uh, it allowed me a load of creative freedom, and yeah, it was a lot of fun, you know, if you, if money is no object to you, just buy one, like, <laughs> it's just fun, you know, uh, so yeah, if you've got no problem with money, then honestly just get one, like, why not, uh, you're not gonna lose out on anything, uh, so yeah, if no money is no object, just get one, if it is, um, which I'm sure it is for the large majority of people. <laughs> um, again, I would just consider basically playing with disposable cameras first, and then if you do really like them, then invest in this. So I have been recording for over an hour now, so I'm gonna wrap this up. So for my rating, I would say my overall rating is a four out of five stars. It's a really cool toy. Um, it's very useful. It has a lot of day-to-day -day applications, um, and it definitely stands up to all of the uh, bullet points on their website that they wanted to achieve uh it's just it doesn't get five out of five stars because it's not exactly a necessary purchase however when you put it next to a disposable camera as a disposable camera it's excellent five out of five stars like you really can't get any better so if you are looking for particularly a sustainable reusable version of a disposable camera absolutely get a paper shoot camera there is no competition you just need a paper shoot camera if you're looking for an alternative to disposables <laughs> as a day-to-day -day object it's not exactly necessary however it is something i would you know if you're into photography and things it is something that i would recommend personally i think it's really cool um again don't jump straight in at the deep end and buy it straight away you know experiment with disposable cameras and stuff first to make sure it's worth it however you know if it is something that you enjoy using disposable cameras and stuff then the paper shoe camera is definitely for you because it will save you so much money in the long run um and they're just they're just so cool i can't emphasize enough how cool it is really so yeah the long and short of it is that it is a really good camera it is exactly what it says it is basically a sustainable reusable option for people who love disposable cameras they are very accessible as a disposable camera in fact much more accessible as a disposable than disposable cameras usually are uh, because the windy thing is not that accessible uh, but this doesn't the paper shoot camera doesn't have any of that so they are very accessible which does stand up to what their aims are on their website they do seem to be very sustainable obviously the paper shoot camera is way more sustainable compared to the 22 disposable cameras it would take you to get the 600 photos and that's just the one time <laughs> so yeah all in all they really do stand up to what they claim to be um, and I would 
100% recommend them to anyone looking for an alternative to disposable cameras. And they're just super cool. And yeah, that is the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed listening to this review. Um, I'm aware this one's been quite long. I mean, I might cut it down a lot, but I've been recording for over an hour. <laughs> and yeah, it's safe to say that I really love my paper shoot camera and I would definitely recommend them. So I hope you found this review helpful. If you have any questions, leave them down below or you can contact me on Instagram. I'm on there a lot. So if you want a prompt answer, I would suggest contacting me on Instagram because I'm always on Instagram. I love Instagram. Um, so yeah, if you have any questions, leave them down below or contact me on Instagram. I will be happy to answer them. Um, and yeah. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed, I hope this was useful, like it if you did, um, again comment down below with any questions you have or if you have a paper shoot camera tell me how, much, how cool it is because they're just, they're so cool. Um, and yeah, subscribe if you want to see more, I have several other reviews coming up very soon and of course I do weekly vlogs so subscribe if you don't want to miss those and I will see you in the next video.